feet in the air, piercing the darkness with a bright ray of hope. From the tallest freestanding observation tower in the United States, breaking the bondage of temptation by booming down into Sin City's late night Las Vegas strip. Broadcasting live, coast to coast, and streaming around the world on the internet. He's prayed with thousands, and now he's ready to pray with you, the dynamic prayer of faith on the all-new Pray America Live. Here, Midnight's radio pastor, David Wood. In the middle of your night, there's a Christian nightlight beaming the good news from 1,149 feet in the air, piercing the darkness with a bright ray of hope. From the tallest freestanding observation tower in the United States, breaking the bondage of temptation by booming down into Sin City's late night Las Vegas strip. Broadcasting live, coast to coast, and streaming around the world on the internet. 
He's prayed with thousands, and now he's ready to pray with you, the dynamic prayer of faith on the all-new Pray America Live. Here, Midnight's radio pastor, David Wood. In the middle of your night, there's a Christian nightlight beaming the good news from 1,149 feet in the air, piercing the darkness with a bright ray of hope from the tallest freestanding...
program has been paid in part by underwriters, sponsors and partners just like you in this listening area. Please contact this local radio station. In the middle of your night, there's a Christian nightlight beaming the good news from 1,149 feet in the air. Piercing the darkness with a bright ray of hope. From the tallest freestanding observation tower in the United States. Breaking the bondage of temptation by booming down into Sin City's late night Las Vegas strip. Broadcasting live, coast to coast, and streaming around the world on the internet. He's prayed with thousands, and now he's ready to pray with you, the dynamic prayer of faith, on the all-new Pray America Live. Here, Midnight's Radio Pastor, David Wood. And we welcome everybody. We are live tonight. And my name is Evangelist Prophet David Woods. <sighs> I am live. <laughs> That's all I can say. What warfare. What warfare we had tonight. Getting on. Well, it shouldn't surprise me for the subject matter that I want to talk about tonight. Minister to you tonight. It shouldn't really matter that much. I mean, it shouldn't be surprising to me. Let's put it that way. Uh, the warfare was intense. And one thing after another, it's just like, well, it's it's supposed to be simple. It's not supposed to be this complex. It's not supposed to be so so much warfare. But then again, what we're doing is is birthing something great for God and everything you birth for God is surrounded uh, with warfare. So that's what I'm teaching on tonight. And I, I just hope so many more of you uh, come in the room tonight and join me. I am a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus is his name. And I am called to give people heaven and to give hell trouble. Hello, everybody. We're going to have a great night tonight. I am ready. I am so ready spiritually. Technically, I guess I wasn't ready. I thought I was, but, well, I can't take the blame, really. I wish I could mm, take the blame, but um, the technical side of things just wasn't cooperating. A part of it, if you really want to know the honest gospel truth, um, we have outdated old computers that you have to keep on kicking and cranking and praying. And <laughs> great will be the day when I've got an extra thousand dollars to go out and buy two new computers. I can just flip the switch. It'll be ready. It'll be updated. But why is it that why is it that a machine that's in 2011 is so quickly outdated? That ought to be the real question. I don't know if you've seen what I placed on YouTube. I mean, not YouTube, uh, Facebook. By the way, everybody's watching tonight from Facebook and YouTube, but not Periscope. We have to get to the bottom of why Periscope, which is Twitter's video feeds, is not working. So I want to share with you uh, this is supposedly from Trump's attorney. And um, I know that if you're looking at all the fake media, the liars, the false prophets of the media, oh, it looks really bleak. It looks like there's no turning back. There's no turning. There's no nothing you can do. But I want to read something to you that I think will be very interesting. It says, today the Electoral college's, uh, college votes will be sealed, sent by special carrier to Washington, D.C., where they will remain sealed until January 6th. Mm, that's coming up. 
When the House and Senate will come into a joint session to open the vote, votes, the media is going to make you believe that it's all over and Joe o. Biden is now officially president on January 6th. Nancy Jezebel Pelosi will sit down, in my opinion, will sit down with the rest of the House members as she has no special power or authority over the hearing. Vice President, our Christian Vice President, Mike Pence, will have all the authority, all the authority as President of the Senate for that day and will accept or reject motions to decide the next steps by the assembly. Mm. Keeps going out on me. A simple scroll shouldn't be so hard, you know? (laughs) Yes, Brian. Nancy Jezebel Pelosi. That's my opinion. You got to say that in radio. Media is going to make you believe that it's all over, and um, Nancy is going to sit down with the rest of the House members as she has no special power and authority over the hearing. Vice President Christian Mike, Mike Pence will have all the authority as the president of the Senate for that day and will accept or reject motions to decide the next steps by the Assembly. Remember, Christian Mike Pence, our vice president, is in full authority that day as written in the Constitution. Not that anybody reads it or acknowledges it. Hello, Joanne. Joanne from California. Ooh, I'm so happy to see your face. I was beginning to think nobody in California liked to see me anymore, but I'm glad you're here. I know that's not true, but it sure feels like it sometimes. Mike Pence is in full authority that day as written in the Constitution. The ballots will be certified today, uh, but that means nothing. The votes will be opened, and and at that point, one House member could, and most likely will, raise their hand to object to the vice president on the state of electors' votes. That objection could cover fraud or any other reason. And with the seconding of that objection, everything changes. Everything! Everything! The House and Senate will divide for two hours at least to debate, then vote. The vote will be per Senate with the vice president being the deciding, our Christian vice president, being the deciding vote, if needed, in the Senate. While the vote in the House will be only one, be one vote per delegation, per state, not per House member. Republicans have 30 delegation votes compared to the delegate Democrats, 20 delegations votes. <laughs> if this scenario runs true, President Trump gets reelected. And by the way, fulfilling every prophecy, I see these preachers. It's not going to come to pass. Something happened. Oh, you all believe it. Yes, yeah, suckers. Hook, line, and singer. What's the matter? Going with the flow. Just every wind of doctrine is what it reminds me of. Instead of standing firm and saying, wait a minute. This is what the Lord said. Do we believe in the word of the Lord? Are we just flakes? Flaky jakies. Flowing with the wind. I don't want to flow with the wind. Are you hearing this? So the Republicans will have 30 delegation votes compared to the Democrats' 20 delegation votes. And if this scenario runs true, President Trump gets reelected. The Democrats, the media, social networks, and globalists around the world become unhinged, unglued. Absolutely, they go nutso, batso, cracko. Chaos erupts bigly. I don't know what bigly means. Big time. I guess that's Trump language. President Trump, our Christian president, is trying to do the right thing and go through the courts first to expose all the fraud. But we all knew that none of the courts, even the, in my opinion, spineless Supreme Court, that's very unpatriotic of me to say that, but that's true, in my opinion. 
They wanted to, they didn't want to touch this issue with a 10 and a half, 20 foot pole. This is why our forefathers were brilliant, smart, because they knew something. They knew a whole lot. Extremely smart. All you have to do is read the Constitution of the United States and you know that the law, policies, and procedures in the end are on our side. They knew something like this could happen someday. So you got to not listen to the fake, false, prophet media. Tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. It's counting down. Shall I read it again? Does it make you happy? <laughs> it should, if you're in your right mind, if you're a liberal cliphead with your brain in your pocket, then you'll go nuts. You'll go absolutely batso. My friend's gun shop down the street was lined up last night, and rightfully so. So we should be selling Bibles off the shelf as if they're contraband. If Dumb and Dumber get in the office, Bibles will become contraband. If Dumb and Dumber get in the office, will be the laughing stock of the world. And if Dumb and Dumber get in the office, they won't. God's got this thing. But let's just try to go there in our mind a little bit. Let's just, let's go down the cesspool river of the media for a moment. If Dumb and Dumber get in, there will be police department. We're here to get your guns and your Bibles. That's what will happen if Dumb and Dumber get in. Did you see the report today of thousands? How many was it? Over a million? Let's just say thousands. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. The thousands of of Chinese undercover operatives have weaseled and wormed their way into the every branch of society in America. Did you see this today? And I'm sure that they have started with our educational system first because we are not a communist country. And here's, here's the thing that really baffles my mind why are there not more americans shouting from the housetop crying in the streets maybe it's too early yet oh yeah they're going to ignore 70 million votes and they're going to say, my vote, your vote, doesn't count? I think not. I think not. Something's got to happen. Something's got to give. Something's got to break here. Because wicked only gets wickeder. You're in a wicked world. You're in a place where it's run by small G God of this world who's blinded the hearts and the minds of men and women all over the place. They, I guess he started with the news media first because that's what he wants. He wants a tongue. He wants your tongue. And sinful, carnal-minded men and women just give their tongue over to the enemy. I think I should read it again. I don't know. I lost a lot of viewers there on that one. Maybe it was when I said dumb and dumber. Maybe. <laughs> uh, maybe I should light. Should I lighten up? I don't see no hearts. I don't see no thumbs. I don't even see an angry face. This is from Pre some of you just joined me. And you didn't hear the whole thing. So I'm going to back up. Yes, Brian, I'm on fire. I've been under warfare tonight. And I got so much to say tonight. I got so much to give. This is from President Trump's attorney, 
Somebody look it up. Make sure this is right. Attorney Jenna Ellis. Sounds right. Says today the Electoral College votes will be sealed. Sent by special carrier. I wonder who that is. To Washington, D.C., where they will remain sealed until January 6th. That's quite a ways away, actually. 20 days. When the House and Senate will come into a joint session to the, to open the votes, you're going to let the House touch them? Mm. Bunch of demon-infested people. The media is going to make you... Yes, that's right. Anybody who, who wants to kill a baby... They want to stab it in the heart. They want to suck it out limb by limb. They want to chop it up. That is demonization at its least. I don't like to think about it. First, it starts with abortion. Then it goes to euthanasia. That's where they start killing old people. Whatever old people means. How old is old? This felt like a sweater night tonight. Just felt like a sweater night tonight. How old is old? Well, it depends on you talk to. Don't talk to Methuselah. He'll tell you, 80 years old? What? You're just getting started, baby. <laughs> I worked hard to come on to be with you tonight. The media is going to make you believe that it's all over and Joe Biden is now officially president on January 6th. Nancy Jezebel, in my opinion, Pelosi, sits down. That'll be a miracle if she sits down. She ought to be sitting down on the West Coast with some grandbabies in a rocking chair. Come on, Nancy, get some needle knitting, knitting needles and sit down. Nancy Jezebel. Nancy Jezebel will sit down with the rest of the House members as she has no special power or authority over the hearing. Vice President Mike Pence will have all the authority as president of the Senate for that day and will accept or reject motions to decide the next steps by the assembly. Remember, Christian President, Vice President Mike Pence is in full authority that day as written in the Constitution of the United States. The ballots will be certified today, but that means nothing. The votes will be opened, and at that point, one House member could, and most likely will, raise their hand to object to the vice president on the state of electors' votes. And that objection could cover fraud or any other reason. They didn't say it, but perhaps are they thinking of the word treason or sedition? All oh, those words aren't known by the liberal cliphead empty head, brain in the pocket, liberals. Yeah. If I knew, if I knew that, that you were a baby murderer legally and you would say things so pathetic like I've heard in the last year, uh, you would not want to be in my presence. And there's a whole lot of you watching that feel the same way. The objection could cover fraud or any other reason. And with the seconding of that objection, everything changes everything. The House, the Senate will divide for two hours at least to debate. Oh, that ought to be a thrill. Then vote. The vote will be per senator with the vice president being the deciding vote if needed in the Senate, while the vote in the House will be only one vote per delegation per state, not per House member. Republicans have 30 delegation votes compared to the Democrats' 20, it's 30-20. That's too high, actually. There's too many evil, wicked con artists. 20 is too many running the House. Our Christian president, President Trump, gets reelected. The Democrats, the media, social networks, globalists, Pagans, in other words, around the world, they come unhinged. They're unglued. Chaos erupts. I can just see them going nutso, batso, cracko, Brian. 
President Trump is trying to do the right thing. Protocol. I've told you before, protocol always is better than genius. You always go down the right channels. That's what he's been doing. And trying to go through the courts first to expose the fraud. It's really not fraud. He's calling it fraud. He's being kind. It's treason. And we all know the penalty for treason. I hope you know the penalty for treason. There's a picture up there over in my office here. It's called Hangtown, California. And my uh, great-great-grandfather was a medical doctor, MD, not PhD, from London. Studied at the great international university there. Hundreds of years old. Came to America, set up his practice in Hangtown, outside of Sacramento. And you got caught horse rustling, and they'd string you up. There's a picture of it. Downtown Square. What year was that? 1901. I think. A big water tower right in the middle of the square. Dirt streets and horses, drawn carriages. And you did something like that, they'd string you up by a rope and hang you in the square. You do not want me to be the president. I have mercy towards your baby, but I don't have mercy towards baby killers. I don't. I really don't. I don't think you do either. Now, if you went down that road in a prior life and you've been redeemed, thank God for the blood and thank God the day you're living in. Thank God for his mercy. Vice President Mike Pence has all the authority as president of the Senate for that day to accept or reject motions, decide the next steps by the assembly. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. That, my friend, is what I believe is going to happen. And then you're going to see prophecy fulfilled. The big question, and I've been saying this, is not about what, who is president in 2021. The big question is what's going to happen in 24. I'm praying that the Lord Jesus comes before them. Aren't you? Aren't you? Okay, we got to get in the word. We got to get in the Bible because that's the main thing. That is the main thing. And I want you to go with me tonight to... Ephesians chapter six, because I want to talk about your life. Some of you still have not got it yet. You live in such a earthy world that you think that you are a body. Although your body is beautiful. Well, it should be. God made it and he doesn't make no junk. Um... You're sitting there and you're thinking everything in life is all about the body and it's really not. You are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. I want to turn over to Ephesians chapter 6 again. While I'm doing that, maybe you can call in and talk to me. You know, it takes somebody... That will push, push, push all the way. I'm, when I'm trying to get online and YouTube comes on, Facebook doesn't. And your inside is just wanting to scream and you want to you want to pick things up and open that window and just throw it out. Somebody said, I drove, I drove a Honda that way one time. Yes, yes, I know. Ford, Toyota, whatever. You drove a car one time and it was, just wouldn't cooperate and you just want to uh, kick it. You're so frustrated, right? I appreciate the Apostle Paul's prayers. Frustrate not the grace. God has given you grace to walk in. Don't frustrate it. I feel comfortable tonight. Even after all the warfare I went through to get on, I feel comfortable with you. And uh, tomorrow night, we'll be back on schedule, and we will be at our regular scheduled time, 10 p.m. nationally, 
East Coast time on the Now Network. I'm very excited about it. Spiritual warfare. Thanks for all your calls, by the way. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Spiritual warfare starts not in verse 12 of chapter 6, but actually starts in verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. And it's where all warfare starts. Success starts with obedience to your spiritual parents. If you don't have a spiritual parents, you're going to act like a spiritual orphan. If you do not see, I went to a church in Dallas years ago, Plano Assembly of God. What a name. If I was running it, I would have changed the name. I don't want to be Plano nothing. I understand they're in the town of Plano, P-L-A-N-O. What's the matter with abundant life or spirit and word fellowship? What's the matter with those names? You got a Plano assembly. I don't know how I got invited, but I went scheduled to be there Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This was, uh, maybe 91, 1990, 91. And when I walked in the door, it smelled musty, smelt rich, had a, an era of uppity-ness. I'm just telling you my opinion. Uppity, uppity, nose so high, scraping the peeling off the, the paint off the ceiling. I'm sure it's not that way today, if it's even around. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me on Sunday morning, he said, I want you to preach, teach, the people. God is your father and Jesus is your elder brother. Teach them about covenant. Teach them that you don't have to live like an orphan. You can live like a king's kid. And that's what I did. But boy, it went over like a sack of hammers. Couldn't get off the ground. People were irritated. Evil spirits were zinging through the building. Come time for an offering. And at that time, it was so intense in the air. I said, Father, if I had $1,000, I'd pay it to them just to get out of this place. I was in the younger days and always going from one town to the other. I didn't have no supporter, no sponsor. The Lord was my father. And I didn't quite realize what all was going on, but the old wretched, poor religious pastor came up to me. Something's wrong with a church that doesn't believe in women preachers. Something's wrong with you, sir. If you don't believe in women preachers, that is a first sign. Something's not going all the way to the top. The lights are on, but ain't nobody home. Somebody taught you wrong and you swallowed it hook, line and sinker. And a sucker is written across your forehead. Something's wrong right off the top. When you see that happen. Jesus surrounded himself with women and they were not quiet. They were quite verbal. Now, a woman can't be a bishop. We know that from the scripture. There ain't nothing wrong with a woman being a teacher, an evangelist. What's the matter with you? So many churches I've been to over the years. I don't know what was worse, dealing with housekeeping at nine in the morning, vacuuming, you're trying to sleep in, 
<laughs> God, do not disturb on your sign like it really matters. Or a preacher that's not totally free. And dealing with the spiritual warfare surrounding it over just what I like to call sweet, innocent people who are just trying to grow in God. They have no clue. They have no idea of the religious politics swirling around their head. They just live in their life, being productive, working a job, trying to grow in God, wanting a place to put their children to learn in the Lord. And frankly, when they're done seeing all the drama and the nightmare of the religious, it's not worth it. Many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Look, sheep don't like fast, swift, moving waters. That's why the psalmist says, he leads me beside still waters, because he knew. There are some religious zealots, Pharisees, Sadducees, that have been in churches for a long time, appointed by their Boss, whoever that is, whatever you call them, for whatever denomination, that every denomination calls them something different. They can hire them and fire them. They're the hirelings. is why I call them maintenance men, but they're, the Bible calls them hirelings. And some of them make life miserable for people. I don't know how I got on that. It's warfare. Warfare. Listen, you've got enough warfare before you leave the house to get into, Jesus understood it. That's why I believe he overturned the money changers. It was warfare. Can you imagine, can you get the picture? I've never turned over a table. I sure would have loved to a few times. <laughs> Can you get the picture of my Lord Jesus coming out? Boom, there goes everything, pigeons flying, coins flying. Whoa. So say, well, you just being judgmental, Jesus. You just, what's the matter? I thought God is love. It was in warfare. Some people's brains are real small, and you have to excuse them. They haven't dilated their brain to understand. You know people like that. And it's hard to deal with people who don't quite, who don't get it. You shouldn't judge. I judge every day. I judge what time I'm going to get out of bed. I judge what I'm going to wear and who, where I'm going to go and who I'm going to go see and if I should keep the appointment or cancel it. I judge how fast I drive down the street. I judge whether I should make a left or a right or go through the light or stop or turn left or turn right. I judge whether I put my seatbelt on. I judge every single day. And something's wrong with people who don't want to make judgments. Typical of liberal, cliphead, brainless people. Got their brain in their pockets. God is love. Look at Jesus. He called them white and sepulcher graves, dead man's graves. Boom, knocks over the table out of the temple and says, uh -uh, my house is not going to be called a den of, this is going to be a house of prayer. Whew. What a person. What a man. What a God. Confrontation. You know, most churches today don't want nothing to do with confrontation. But why am I saying all this? Because we have a, a wimpy, spineless, no conviction bunch of Christians today. Many of them don't vote. Now, of course, I know this is not you. Many of them don't vote. Who was it that ran the streets of Richmond, Virginia and said, give me liberty or give me death? Remember, I've been there. I've, I've taken the tour, walking tour. 
Do we have any people like that anymore? What about the apostles and the disciples who counted not their life even unto the death? Or hung upside down and put in a vat of oil. Not that anybody wants that. Dear Lord. What happened? Warfare surrounds the birth of miracles. Somebody asked me, they said, Are you, Brother Woods, is it okay to take the vaccine? What a loaded question. Well, I have been praying about that. I need that to get somebody's attention. I am not ready to put a, what do they call it? I'm not ready to put a syringe in my arm that was prepared so fast. Not so fast, not with my family. Maybe you feel different. Maybe you think I'm wrong. It's okay. You're entitled to your opinion. This is America. At least for now. Until Beijing Biden, if he has his way, <laughs> with the key to the, to the, um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what bedroom key they've got. They got three bedroom keys and some, some spy. What is the matter? This ought to boil your radiator over. This ought to just absolutely make you loud. Now, now heathens are going to do what heathens do best. Be heathens. Godless. But uh, no, no, no. They're all hyped up on it. Oh, they're just... Pump, 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 promote, promote, promote. Watch it. You can see it. You're seeing it. Today was historical. Today was a miracle. No, it wasn't a miracle. I'll tell you what a miracle is. COVID, you die in Jesus' name. You will not come on bodies in the name of Jesus. You die at the root. That's a miracle. You invented some vaccine with a bunch of dead chicken eggs in there or whatever. I don't know what they put. I don't know what they put in there. You mean you're going to trust your federal government who does not know how to keep an election straight and you're going to trust them to put some kind of garbage in your arm that you don't know anything about? And oh, by the way, it's got the federal government stamp on it. Whoopee! Uh-uh. No. Sorry. Bye-bye. Not for me. Ah. <sighs> I got to calm down. No, no, it's not going to happen. Let's see what those folks with the word sucker written across their head. Let's see what happens to them. Because already they're saying some kind of, I don't know what it is. Bell's palsy? Drooping faces? Come on, give me a break. Is this history repeating itself? Brother Woods, you shouldn't be walking in fear. No, I'm not walking in fear, but I'm going to tell you right now. If you can't trust the federal government to figure out how to take a paper ballot and count it, how you gonna, who is going to do this in their right mind? Stick a needle in their arm and you don't, oh yeah, it was created by a company. Oh, wonderful company. Well, who, do you, who in the world is that company? We don't know who this company is. Trust me, says the federal government. I don't think so. I have my Bible. I have my guns. I have, what was the old saying? In World War II, they said, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. I know everybody doesn't agree with this. I know I've got, I've got, I got liberal friends and relatives and they don't agree. But you go ahead, stick it in your arm, and let's see what happens to you. 
Let's just watch. Shrivel up like a prune. I'm going to watch. So he said, Brother Woods, you should have you should have faith. I do a lot in the Lord, but not in man. In fact, one scripture in Proverbs says, do not put your faith in men. Hello, Sister Jackie. I think you're wearing a pink mask. I would rather wear a mask than to, than to have some government that cannot count votes. In my baby's arms. Rather just stay home. I didn't want to say all that. I, I, I probably, according to some people's account, shouldn't say all that. Maybe I ought to wear a sweater more often. Is it too hot? Is it too tight? My. No, no, not going to happen. We're just going to watch. See what all the people... There's a whole lot of people with emptiness in their mind. They have nothing and they have nothing. They blink, they walk, they talk, they eat, they sit up. <laughs> Nothing's happening on the inside. Nothing, nothing of intelligence is going on. I wish we were an Amer a Christian country. I wish we were. We were based on, we were based on, on Judeo-Christian principles. But oh, how far we have come. I don't think I'm wrong to tell the people of God that you should wait to get the vaccine and not be so quick to trust. And they're going to sell you. Oh boy, are they already selling it. I love President Trump, but there's some things that I'm not too thrilled about. I think some things should have had the hammer dropped. He is the president. I think he has a lot more ability to drop the hammer sooner rather than later. I think the wheels of the government move a little too slow. Nevertheless, we're talking about spiritual warfare tonight. And I want us to realize and recognize tonight the difference between the voice of the Holy Spirit and angels. Angels are busy and active in your life, but the conversations that take place between you and a spiritual being ought to be between you and the Holy Spirit. I have had conversations with angels, and I'm not ashamed to tell you. And they've been powerful. And it's usually to show me something about my ministry. It helps me guide me along on how to pray. I don't worship angels. I don't have long, drawn-out conversations with angels. Pretty soon, you're going to get over into deception. Same thing with numbers. When I see numbers flash up, I, I hear the Holy Spirit uses that in my life, but... I'm not a numerology guy. I believe that if you're not careful, the devil has a counterfeit for everything God does. And I want you to remember to take everything that's going on in your life back to the Bible. Back to the Bible. Let me take a break here for just a moment and let me just say, I really got to have your help today. Today. Financially, I got to have your help today. They're going to run that debit card to get our new, you know, our phone system back here. And I, I, I've got to have $800 before tomorrow. That's no big deal. God's going to do that. I've been praying. Oh, have I been praying. And this program is blessing many and we're, we're gaining ground and we're taking territories and we're moving forward and we started the media church, and it starts January 3rd, and I'm so excited about it, but I got to tell you that I can't do it without your help. I got to have this $800 by tomorrow. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, 
I'm not going to sit here and sweat and toss and turn and wring my hands and I'm going to tell the people of God and I'm going to trust that you're going to do it somehow and I'm going to thank you. He's going to do it. He's done it before. He'll do it again. He's done it before and he's going to do it again. Father, thank you for the boldness to say what needs to be said. Thank you for people that will support me. They'll be critics. They don't like what I'm saying. Thank you for those who are supportive of me, who will help me fight a good fight of faith, stand with me in faith, stand with me believing, who will also not compromise. I don't like compromise. And I thank you, Father, that every word, that every man be a liar. God is a God of truth. That every word that I've spoken tonight come to pass according to your word, that the fire of the Holy Ghost has been upon me tonight. And Lord, I have dreams in my heart for this ministry. I have high expectations and I have so many want spiritually that need to happen but not without spiritual warfare involved if you've encountered spiritual warfare in one way or another i want to hear your call tonight i want to take your call i want to hear what it is that you've been fighting how you've been fighting what you've been doing perhaps you're at a standstill in the fight and you don't know how to fight any further he said, you shouldn't really need to fight. No, no, no. You ought to read your Bible. It tells you what to get. It tells you what to wear to a fight. How to get dressed in the fight. Now, you shouldn't fight every fight. Some battles are not worthy of fighting. Some battles are worthy of fighting. Some battles are not worth fighting. You're going to have to hear the Holy Spirit. In fact, Many of you want me to hear the Holy Spirit for you, but I'm going to tell you, I know God wants to speak to you directly and show you what battles you're supposed to fight. There are some fights over your spiritual fights that are going on over your wife, over your husband that you need to fight. I can't fight them for you. I can pray with you. I can bind. I can loose. I can, I can believe. I can set my faith in agreement with you. But at the end of the day, you've got to fight this fight with the Lord. That's not very comfortable. A lot of people don't want to hear that. Oh, brother, I don't want to fight. I'm tired. When, back in the 80s, was it 80s? Sweet girl. Kind of a, a ding -a song, Christian song. Came on. The warrior is a child. <laughs> the warrior is a child. No, you're not a child. God, don't stick weapons of warfare in your hand when you're a bottle-sucking saint. Mm -mm. what's the matter with these songwriters the warrior is a child no the warrior is not a child the warrior has to be full grown and mature in the lord god will not stick weapons of warfare in your hands when you're a baby you're going to have to have people fighting along with you i know you are israel in olympia washington you've been fighting and i've been praying with you the battle is about to come to a close, saith the Lord. Sometimes we feel so weak physically and spiritually, emotionally drained and exhausted. And we think in our minds, am I the only one? Am I the only one that cares? Am I the only one that really knows? Am I the only one? You're not by yourself. By the way, this little thing I'm waving around, this is my little letter opener. It looks dangerous. Looks like a weapon. Looks like a dagger. It's just a glossy piece of wood. I liked it. It's my angel. A little angel. I keep it up. Beat down on this thing when I'm preaching. <laughs> Maybe I'm too much for you tonight. Hi, caller. What's on your mind tonight? Hey, Pastor Wood. This is Matt and Kat. How are you guys tonight? We are so blessed in the Lord, and I, I, I hope I'm not getting too crazy on you right now. No, no, you just, 
there's just some stuff that needs to be said, and, you know, you can't sugarcoat everything either. That's right. Matt and Cat from Oklahoma. So you haven't made your trip yet, but I gave you some things. Not yet. Coming up. Well, and, you know, um, we actually had to move our date that we're going to leave from the 18th to the 16th because mm. our daughter's school, we had snow here yesterday. Ah. And um, they went ahead and called the snow day because, you know, the how things get icy and everything. And so now all the snow's melted, but they said they're just going to go to virtual learning, and basically they're just going to be doing reviews. So it gives us the freedom to, you know, go ahead and leave earlier, and everyone's excited. So, we're, Lord willing, we're going to be leaving the 16th and be headed down. And it was just, you know, a blessing to, to go ahead and have the girls home and uh, start getting things ready and packed up, but we're just so, ready to. So, to if you get to leave early, do you get to come home early, or no? Doesn't change that part. No, no, it doesn't change that part because we were originally going to stay for about eight days, mm-hmm. and you know that you know it, it's a little bit of time, but now it's going to be. It seems like a little bit more, but it's going to be ten. So my dad's just very excited. My father is very excited. So. Um, he just always worked, you know, worked a lot. So now we're just trying to make sure that we're able to, um, we're able to get down there and spend time and everyone's just excited. Um, you know, my uncle, he's getting uh, some bikes ready for the girls, you know, he says they'll make sure and play games with them and, Good. uh, you know, do that fun stuff. You know, when you're, when you, if you got snow in Oklahoma City and you're going to Southern Arizona, it's going to help you thaw a little bit. You warm up. Yeah. Right? Yes. Uh huh. You're yes. looking forward to that, yes. I can tell. Yes. And I'm, I'm just happy that we get to spend this time, you know, together as a family and everything. Of so course. Yeah. We're just thrilled. You know, yeah. so I was listening to what you were saying in regards to spiritual warfare, and um, I didn't get that. Sorry, my daughter was talking to me. Anyways, um, I haven't seen, I'm part of a group, and it's a really good group for, you know, women, you know, motherhood and everything. It's called A Journey to Motherhood and Beyond, uh-huh. you know. Right. And I've just been noticing um, lots of women are putting on there that they're dealing with um, anxiety and depression and different things. And this one lady um, talked to, you know, talked to all of us, and she said she she has postpartum depression. And I'm just like, Lord, I I don't want to be underneath that, you know. It's a very big group, and I believe the Lord does me to it. I've been putting scriptures up and God leads me that, you know, we do get busy as mothers. So have scriptures in your hands. I said, just as your physical body needs food to eat, so does your spiritual body. So if not, you're going to get weak. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You told the large group that? You told them that? Yeah, I put it on there. Oh, my. And then the incoming comes, right? (laughs) Well, (laughs) I put a picture of, of my daughter on there. And I put a picture, you know, and I and I told them, you know, put the armor on, read Ephesians 6, because that's where the Lord had me, was in Ephesians 6. I was wondering, you know, I always pray and ask the Lord, you know, where do you want me in the Bible? Where do you want to speak to me and give me a ring of word? Or what do I need to learn? You know, what do I need to learn? You know, yeah. every time you read the Bible, it changes. <laughs> well, not changes, but it, it, you see it from a different perspective. I understand what you're saying. Yes. Let me just yes. say this. This is a good question that you're asking, and I want to read Ephesians 6. But let me just say that as the body of believers, Christians, we are not in the book of Daniel. We are not living out the book of Revelation. Please, please hear me when I tell you this, because there are a lot of people that have never been to Bible college. They've never studied, and they, you know, they got a little thrill up their leg or their arm or back down behind their neck, and they think immediately they're a scholar. If you hear somebody say, we are in the book of Revelation, we are living out the book of Revelation. No, we're not. No, we're not. Not yet. We are in the book of Ephesians. That's where we are, and the book of Acts. The end of the book of Acts and in the book of Ephesians. Why? 
because we are the church age. We are not yet going into a different dispensation. We are the church age. And as the church age is now full on, while we have churches, they're going to close up. Part of me wonders if the COVID is actually bringing us to a place of a closing of a dispensation before the coming of the Lord, after the rapture, when we're caught up to be out of here, then the church will, the church buildings, I don't see, will have any profound significance or use other than a dinner hall or whatever they want to use it for, bingo hall, fish hall, whatever clown joke stuff that they use it for, that the world would use it for. It's a holy tabernacle. It's a holy sanctuary. People have spent holy money on God's church, and we are in the church age. But when that church age closes, and the church age will close at the rapture, at the catching away of the saints, when the rapture comes, there is no more use for a pulpit, a steeple, a baptismal tank. There's no more use for that. We go into a whole other dispensation, and then we begin to walk out uh, the book of Revelation. The only thing where we would come close to being in the book of Revelation is in the first chapter, maybe the second chapter, where it's talking about the types of churches, and this is what, you know, we have as a role model for the churches today, but we are in the church age. We are not yet yeah. uh, in the book of Revelation. And so that's why when you said that, where am I in the, in, in the scheme of things? Yes, you are in spiritual warfare. And yes, you said the right thing to this massive group of women, but but here's what I'd like to say. If a woman is, is bound by postpartum depression, I know that there's some chemicals and hormones and physical things that are going on, but the devil can use that and play on that and build upon that. If you're talking to people that are stressed with anxiety disorders, these are spiritual warfares in the minds of people. And if you, you know, whoosh, Pull out your sword of the spirit and say, look, everybody, this is your answer. And you start swinging. You will have backlash. You will. You have just, whether God put you in it or not, you have just entered into Warfare 101. And you're going to have to start swinging because people are going to get offended. They're going to get, just for the fact that you put out the word in front of a demon uh, that's bothering the mind of people, you're going to, be, you're going to enter yourself into Warfare, whether you're, whether you're supposed to enter yourself or not, you're there. And that's why I don't believe babies are uh, automatically thrown into warfare. It's Christian babies. No. Bottle sipping, sucking saints are never called to warfare. That's why it's important that you grow and mature. Now, some are trying to fight the war, the battle. And they're, and they're two feet tall with a seven-foot sword. And they can't even swing it. They, they, they're not armed and dangerous. They, they, they look pathetic. And we have nothing but ourselves uh, to blame when we're not ready to fight the good fight of faith. Right. He does not want it's us just, on the milk of the word. No. And it's just, you know, it was like a stigma, like how the world says, the, the word, excuse me, says that, you know, to not be conformed to, the, to this world or the pattern of this world, you know. I'm trying to remember exactly, it's in Romans 12. 12, 1 and 2, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. Yeah. And it just seemed like everyone was saying they had postpartum. They were struggling with anxiety. They were doing this. It says, give yourself some grace. Yes, of course, give yourself some grace. But it's like the Holy Spirit inside me was like, hey, you guys, you know, take authority over that stuff. And, you know, read Ephesians 6. You know, because they, they were, you know, of course, it's a place to advance. I understand that. Mm-hmm. But it's just, you know, you have to, we have to talk about the power of, of God. And, and, and then like again, said, remember that it's not all spiritual warfare. Some of it is, like I said, hormones, raging, going yeah. crazy, chemicals, yeah. minerals, different things in the blood. Yeah. Things are going wild in a person's body, and we cannot blame everything on the devil. We have to discern and this is what I was, this is what really led me tonight to want to talk about this subject is the word discernment. Discernment means to see in the spirit. It is one of the nine gifts of the spirit. For years in the 60s and 70s, everybody majored on the gift of tongues and interpretation. Wonderful. In the 90s and 2000s, we've, we've majored on the prophecy gift. And many have confused the gift of prophecy with the 
office of the prophet and don't know the difference. And yeah, like there's a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom. I've heard of that too. Yes, yes, and we've, we've majored on that, but nobody wants to talk about the other nine, one of the nine gifts called the gift of discerning of spirits. Do, 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 do. I don't want to talk about that. Oh, the spirits make me scared or whatever. Well, and I hear Christians talk that way. Yeah, I hear it all the time. And another thing a minister told me, he says, you know, everyone says judge not. Don't judge a person. It, but the, he was telling me, he was telling me I was, you know, I was allowing him to, you know, of course, discerning what he was saying. But he was saying, you know, a lot of people, you know, they live a certain lifestyle, you know, and it always come the ungodly or however it is, you know, say, don't judge us, don't do this. And I believe Jesus was talking, you know, in regards to, he says that word to, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of what it was talking about, what he was trying to tell me, the, that minister. He says, he says, but we're to be fruit examiners. That's he good. Says, so in a way, that's, that's judging. He said, it's not necessarily judging, but God calls us to be a fruit. You inspector. Know, uh-huh. Yes, inspector, not judge for you. And that's what he says. That everyone says, don't judge me, don't do this. Yeah. Well, you're either going to produce good fruit or you're going to produce bad fruit. But see, but see, Kat, there's there's a problem with that. There's a there's right. a little minor pro- flaw in that. First of all, I don't want to be an inspector. It's boring. Number one, absolutely <laughs> boring to be an inspector, and you have to do it with your natural senses. When we talk about judgment, we're not talking about judging people outwardly. I don't judge people outwardly. I mean, all men fail. The great ones get back up. I heard some news about a minister that's now passed away, and I was just, I mean, it nearly put me on the floor. had no idea. Shocking, riveting, earth-shaking, shattering to my world. Uh, This gentleman was of the utmost respect in my mind, and then when I heard that, uh, but he's gone. I don't get into that kind of judgment. What we did last night is we right. took communion. And I believe all communion, all judgment, judging in a Christian should be based with their mouth and the communion cup. I I don't want to judge any other way. Uh, I, to, I said the other day that when I was walking, uh, going into a meeting, I heard, I was going to go pray for some folks, and I heard, in my spirit, man, I heard the words, here come to judge, here come to judge, here come to judge. And I'm doing the walking. I'm going towards, and it's like the Holy Spirit said, Christ in you, the hope of glory, the greater one lives on the inside of you. Jesus is the judge. Now, we all believe, yeah. if we're Christians, that you shouldn't judge. Jesus is the judge. That's true. Well, where does Jesus live? Inside of you. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not judging the people I'm done. People are lambs. People are babies. People are, are innocent and sweet and they're, and they're, and they're, and they're helpless in most cases. Yeah. But, but in the spirit, in the spirit now, in the spirit realm, this is what I want to talk about. I've got to learn and I do know this, but there's a lot of Christians that don't know. I judge sickness. I judge disease. I judge infirmity and poverty. I judge spirits of infidelity and lust. Those are the things that I judge. And how do I judge it? With the words of my mouth. In the name of Jesus, I shove this cup of the communion, which represents the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I shove it up into the face of infirmity, and I judge you out of this body, and I command you to go in Jesus. Now, that's judging. Right. That's it's like judging. When, it's like the, a scripture has come to mind. It's like, isn't that what Jesus did when that man by the graves had all those demons in him? Yes. You know. And they said, oh, gee, Lord, son of the, have mercy upon, don't before our time. They didn't want mm-hmm. Jesus to judge them before their time. Well, the time has come. The time has come. 
And Jesus has, has come and gone and come again. And he lives inside of each one of us. And the, the King Jesus makes the judgments on the inside of us towards all that is underneath the, the filthy, putrefied, gross, devilish blanket called the curse of the law. And yeah. anything under that blanket, cat, I'm going to judge it out. And I'm going to start with my own yeah. life first before I get to you or anybody else. And I don't think that a lot of Christians see judging in that viewpoint. And that's really where our minds ought to go. How to judge yeah. in the realm of the spirit. I've told evil exactly. spirits before that have talked out. I've said, you tell me your name and you tell me your assignment. And you tell me if you have a legal assignment. And if you don't, I'm going to run the sword of the spirit right through you. You will burn in the lake of fire forever. Oh, the spirit gets quivery. Yes, it tells everything it knows. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Because why? I judged it in the name of Jesus with the authority of Christ. This is a whole different mindset. If you just religion, if you just uh, you put in your time into church, you will not understand this. You will not, you will not grasp it. Your brain will do bat flips. You'll never want to talk about spiritual warfare again. But I have the answer. It's in the word of God. And you've got the answer tonight. You can judge that addiction right out of your life. You can judge that sickness right out of your life. Cat, there are people today that are watching. I know you're not addicted. There are people watching today that are addicted and they don't know how to deal with it. And they go to, hi, my name's Leroy and this is my brother, Billy Bob. We here because we addicted. We our choice of drugs. No, 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 no. I got an addiction and it's the word of God, a new addiction. And I judge that old devil of addiction right out of my life. Whew. And you know, I've told my husband too, I've had encounters where, um, one time I was, I was living with my uncle at the time and I saw my husband this. I've had visions and I've had different things, but for the first time, this is a couple years back, my aunt and uncle were going to go on a trip somewhere and I was going to be home alone. And when I pulled up to the house, um, something was just seemed off and I had called the police and I thought someone broke in the house or was messing because one of the, the back gate was open. Mm. And so I went in, and I was in the house. I'm just like, okay. So they said it's fine. And then I just felt like this taunting. It's like, you know, like a laughing at me. And I kid you not, I the Holy Spirit inside of me just, it's like a whole new, like I said before, you know, my husband's the one that the, put, put the foot down. Yeah. But that day, the Lord, I told whatever it was to get out, and I began to just, it just rose up real quick inside of me. And wherever it was, I felt it leave. Yeah. That's just, you know, that's, that goes along with the discernment, you know. As you continue to read, the, the people of God continue to read the Word, mm -hmm. you know, it becomes alive. Right. And it allows you to have a discernment, too. But I've had that happen to me before. And it's just something you can, your spirit, your spirit man, can just, like you said, discern that. And I want, Kat, I want, that. I want everybody that's listening or watching to realize that they're not only ambassadors for Christ. They're not only a soldier for the Lord over their affairs of life, their own front gate, their back gate, their door, their house, their finances, their children. But I want them to realize that their prayers are so powerful that they can totally shake and change a city and a nation. Yeah. Their pa yeah. Our prayers are so powerful effective in praying and warfare that we can literally turn situations in cities and nations. I've got to take a break. Let me come right back to you, Kat. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back from Oklahoma. <laughs> Oklahoma. You're tuning in Free Alive. We're talking with Kat on the phone from o Oklahoma City, and um, we're talking about spiritual warfare. And I want to just read to you, Kat, about a, a little scripture here. Uh, Ephesians chapter six and verse 12. Well, actually verse 10 is where the Lord started me out years ago. And, uh, Ephesians chapter six and verse 10, finally, my brethren and the Holy spirit said, stop. I said, what Lord? He said, you don't start with the word. Finally, 
I said, oh, okay. He said, go back up to verse 1, where the pericope of Scripture starts. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. He said, that's where you start. And if you want to get to verse 10, finally, therefore, brethren, you've got to obey your parents. God puts spiritual mothers and fathers in your life. God puts the heavenly father in your life. And those are the people that we must obey in the Lord, for this is right, the Bible says. Finally, brethren, my brother, then we can drop down to verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trickery of the devil. I've actually been in churches, Kat, that say, don't mention the D word in this church. You're going to scare everybody. And actually, it's in a way, they're true. They're right. Because we have such a spineless, wimpy church world today. Yeah. I, I'm not happy with the church world that we have today. I don't think Jesus is either. All right. I, I don't want to get in on styles. I could. I, I, I'm not particularly fond over worship artists. I don't know why everybody that's popular that's singing some kind of a tune that we can't understand the words sounds like they're in the restroom grunting out a song. I don't understand that kind of way of singing i'm sorry i just don't get it i i I want some fire behind the songs that i'm singing and that and and what i'm hearing i I want i want some fire i like to be around a preacher that you know veins are bulging somewhere they don't have to be i mean i've i've seen results without you know getting emotional but there's just something wrong with it right And, and uh they said, don't mention the D word. Well, I, th- I thought at that time, maybe there's lots of D words hiding out in here. Or maybe that's why they don't want me to mention the D word. Right. I said, you mean devil egg, devil ham, devil, devil, devil. Ah, oh, don't mention that. I said, come out of them in the name of Jesus. That's what we uh, the people. The people are not excited to have a deliverance ministry today. There's no enthusiasm. There's no excitement about a preacher who's telling the devil to get his hands off your children. I don't know why. There should be. That should be the thing you're looking for. Maybe they're the, maybe those kind of people are killing their children. Maybe that's it. A deliverance minister is a must. Yes, and that's why I tell my children. I tell them about, you know, the enemy, the devil. I said, you know, the devil wants you to lie. The devil wants this. The devil wants that. I said, but that's how you know who you're listening to. I said, God says this. And and I'll have conversations with my children like that because they need to know. (laughs) And you know who he picks on the most? He picks on the the weakest of all, and that's a child. I'm not talking about a two-year-old. I'm talking about somebody who's just getting started in the faith. I told somebody the other day, oh, they just got born again. I'd like to take them to church. And I thought, oh, if I take them to church, I'm going to ruin it. Some of you are laughing because you understand exactly what I'm saying. Oh, it's going good. They're growing. Now I've got to go to church and mess it up. Am I being too hard, Kat? Is this too, is this too uh, maybe cynical or I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's not right, but I, this is the way I feel. No, I don't think it's right at all. I mean, the, you know, they have to have to be exposed to that because that's the word of God. You know, it, that's that's what He says. <laughs> you know. Well, I know that in the last hour, my my viewership on social media has plummeted. The moment I've started talking about it, it was really high when I was talking about politics, but now we we gone off talking about radical stuff. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the trickery of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. We're in the evil day. And having done all to stand, verse 14, 
Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That means there's darts coming at you. Yeah. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. And Paul goes on to say, for which I am an ambassador in chains, and therein I may be able to speak boldly as I ought to speak. Oh, beloved. Ephesians 6, read it. As you read it, you understand that you are in a battle, you are in a war, and there's warfare going on all around you. So he said, well, it feels like I'm losing. No, you're not losing. You're just uh, looking with your own eyesight rather than hearing God. Yeah. Listen yeah. to the Lord. Yeah. And that's, that's why I felt led to call, because it just it seemed like if you weren't, and I understand some things, you know, like what, I, what, what was mentioned, postpartum and anxiety, I understand that sometimes it is chemical, but it's just like it felt like it's that person was reading it. They didn't say, oh, that they're struggling or something, that, oh, what, what's wrong, you know? It's just... Well, there's, just there's no wrong. doubt that you can lead the way as a mature Christian and pray over them and, and pray in a couple of ways. I take authority over every demonic spirit that would try to come against their mind, against their body. I pray for the healing power of God to come over them. See, two ways. So you're praying for healing and you're praying that uh, everything is attacked and you got it all covered there. And then, of course, I plead the blood of Jesus. And uh, there's a lot of people that I'm meeting, Kat, that are baby Christians, new Christians that have never heard praying like that ever in their life, didn't know that it even existed and they're excited that they're hearing it for the first time, and they're excited to pray that away, and they're seeing results. Seeing results! Yeah, they're like, wait, why did nobody tell me about this or, or sooner, you know? Right! <laughs> I hear it all the time. And I, and, I, and I told, I said, Lord, would it be all right to share this? He said, please, please. Because he wants Christians to walk in the authority as the believer and, and not be wimped out, you know? spineless. I don't think that it's because they're wimped out because they're spiritually, you know, uh, invalid. I think that a lot of Christians just have not been taught. They just have not been taught. And I think that's the important thing. So, so Kat, are you signed up for the, uh, the media church? Yes. My husband's like, he was like, because he was hearing it, he goes, go ahead and get signed up. I said, oh, yeah, I need to do that. Because I was like, I didn't know if there was, like you said, about 30 people. So my husband's like, yeah, go ahead and get on that. I said, okay, I sure will. Yeah. And we are signed up. Have Good. Have a ticket number and everything. Wonderful. So we're excited. Uh, I'm excited <laughs> with you. And let me just tell you, somebody said, well, do I have to quit my home church to be a member of the media church? No, no, no. It's normally $5 a week, and you can go online and you can sign up, get your reservation in. We're only taking 30 people on a Sunday. It's closed to the rest of the world. It's going to be a safe environment. If you are a tither, you can email me. You can message me. You can let me know. And you can say, Pastor, I want the special code that will waive the fee. And if you're a tither, we'll give you the code. You'll get in at no cost, and it'll be our gift to you. Uh, but there's lots of people that are coming from other churches and their tithe goes wherever they're going. That's fine. They still want to be a part of it. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's just two different ways of doing it. So we're very excited about it. They can find it at PrayAmericaLive.com. At the top of the screen, you'll find a drop-down uh, little menu. And you'll drop down until you find where it says the media church. And then go ahead and register and if you need the little code in registering because you're a tither to this ministry, to this church, we'll give it to you. Right. And I don't know of any other media church that's doing this, but this is the way the Lord showed me to do it, and I'm excited to do it. Right. Chat- and, you know, another, 
Go ahead. But, <laughs> well, you go ahead. I, 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 I'll, I'll save it. No, it's okay. I was just going to say another good point to point out is if you think about it, it's only four weeks, $5. Most of, you know, a person spends more to go out and eat every once in a while than it does to pay for the media church. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> you know? true. Uh, you know, so, we're not trying to get rich. We're trying to take care of the expenses, but we just want to let people know, see if they're serious because, yeah. uh, this shows uh, that they're serious. I, I want to say it's very frustrating when I'm coming on and all these updates decide to come on. And then all of a sudden, uh, Facebook doesn't cooperate and you're like, what in the world? And I realize I'm in warfare. I'm, I'm, I'm doing exactly what I'm going to be talking about. And I started taking authority and binding and loosing and speaking words of life and boom, finally we're there. What was it? Two hours later than normal. But, um, uh, yeah, we're on, and I thank God for it. Kim is asking for prayer in um, in Kentucky, and Father, I just pray for her right now that you will touch her body. Cat and I agree. Cat's in Oklahoma. I'm in Washington State, and we pray right now for Kim in Kentucky, who needs a touch in her physical body. Father, touch her right now in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every infirmity, every sickness. I command you to loose your hold and go from her body right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for touching her and healing her in the name of Jesus. We believe she receives it by faith, and we thank you, Lord, for ministering healing to her right now in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Yes, I was praying along with you. I just pray when, you know, people have a prayer request anymore, it's just like, I'll just start praying in the spirit, and I'm just like, oh, that's good, oh, Lord. You know. <laughs> now remember, when you make the long trip from Oklahoma City to Southern Arizona, that we're always going to be there. You can always get us on your device. You can still pull us up. You can still call us in. Call in. Give us a report yes. on the road. Amen. Yes, I will. Well, thank you guys for you know for being you know able to you know, share this awesome word. And we just look forward to hearing more and more calls and new calls and deliverances and everything. We look Amen. To- That's right. So two days, 48 hours, you'll be heading out, right? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, Lord, sir. Gonna- give them a safe trip. Provide every need. Touch them, Lord. Give those children patience and traveling mercies, oh God. Protection all the way there and all the way back. Give them a fun, memorable time, Lord. In Jesus' name, keep them in safety, Lord, and provide for them, Lord, as they go and as they come. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Kat and Matt from Oklahoma, we love you. God bless you. Thanks for calling me. All right, God bless. Perhaps I'm too hard. Or maybe you like a tie better than you like a sweater. I'm not sure yet. Michael, you still with me from Hawaii? Israel, you still with me from Washington? Taking your calls for just a few more minutes, 888-701-4483. And I really need your help. Today is a day to help me. Ooh, I need your help. They're going to be calling me. I'm going to say, Lord, what am I going to do? I've already been saying that today. What am I going to do, Lord? (laughs) What am I going to do? Go online to monthlypartners.com. Show your best offering tonight. If this program meant anything to you, it's been a blessing to you. Show your best offering into the kingdom work tonight, monthlypartners.com or the cash app. 888-701-4483. If you're up against spiritual warfare, let me hear about it tonight.
It looks like uh, Tammy from Iowa is coming to church. She's registered. And Cat and Matt are coming to church. They're registered. Ron's coming to church from uh, Iowa. He's registered. Oh, brother CJ from Georgia is registered. He's coming to church. Who else is registered? Are you registered yet? Go to PrayAmericaLive.com. Find the drop-down menu where it says the media church. Register. If you're a tither to this ministry, send me an instant a messenger or an email, and I'll send you the, the secret passcode. And it'll waive all the weekly fee, and you'll get in. 888-701-4483, that's the number to call me tonight on. Perhaps you're facing spiritual warfare yourself. It's so important that when you go through spiritual warfare that you keep reminding yourself and keep saying it out loud. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Go ahead, say it right now. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Good reminder. It's good for you to say it. It's part of your authority as the believer. Get off my mind. Get off my back, devil. Uh Uh-uh. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Right? Well, it's, uh, it's too bad I started out too late. Maybe a lot of people have gone to bed already. But we'll pick it up again tomorrow. I don't know if we'll talk about spiritual warfare like we did tonight, but wow, that was good. I thought it was good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Remember, there's a difference between angels and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does the talking. The angels do the doing a lot of times. Well, the Holy Spirit does the doing too, but a little bit different. Don't get your mind off the Holy Spirit and onto angels. Let the angels do their work. Keep your mind centered on the Holy Spirit. Tomorrow is the big day. I've got to have $800 for our, I don't know, they're going to charge our debit card. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus, how am I going to do this? So everybody watching this on a rebroadcast, rerun, if you're watching late at night, know that it is very critical. Come morning time, when the sun comes up, I get up and I start praying. I said, Lord, please let the money be there. Please let the money be there. Please let the money be there, Lord. That's how I live, 40 years. That's right. And he never fails me. He always helps me. He always comes through for me. 888-701-4483 tonight. Father, I thank you. Unlimited supply, the resources that you're bringing to us to get this job done. Our phones will be fixed and coming back to us. We continue taking calls on tomorrow when our program is on the network, the NOW network across the nation and the world. Give us some good calls tomorrow night, Lord. That we may minister your life and your love to people in the name of Jesus. Listen, I apologize for being on late tonight. Uh, boy, did we have a hard time getting on, but whew, we got through it. We got through it. And all I can say is to God be the glory. I'll see you tomorrow night. I love you. Go to monthlypartners.com. Go to Cash App. Help me out. And I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same place. Earlier next time. Earlier tomorrow night. <laughs> and we'll believe God for great things. I love you. You're listening to David Woods and Pray America Live. You've been listening to Pray America Live with evangelist and radio pastor, David Woods. Join us online with David Woods' Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope channels for a refreshing time of one-on-one prayer, testimonies, and singing. David Woods Ministries is supported by the love gifts and free will love offerings of partners just like you. You can become a radio ministry partner by going to www.monthlypartners.